Preface of Heart of Spring by Shaw Nielsen This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Williams John Shaw Nielsen was born at Panola, South Australia, on 22nd February 1872. By race, he is all Scottish. His grandparents were William Nielsen and Jessie McFarlane of Cooper, Neil McKinnon of Skye and Margaret Stewart of Greenock. His father was a farmer and contractor who removed to Victoria when Nielsen was nine years of age. The boy had little schooling and early went to work in the hard way of the bush. In that way, he has remained. His poems were long meditated and slowly brought to utterance. His equipment was a few books well conned, the strong blood of his race and the high heart of his ancestry. Though his work is fully modern, it affirms the Celt. But in Nielsen, the mystery is made lucid. He does not gather flowers of fairy. He preserves the odour of blossoms perished long ago. Without the circumstance, he transmutes the Celtic essence. John Nielsen, his father, also wrote and published verses, and some of them, like the following, have a rare value. The last time. It is the last time, darling. We shall meet and we must breathe a long, a last adieu. Your eyes will follow. Love. To watch my ship grow dim and lessen in the distant blue when outward bound for yonder distant clime, while murmuring through your tears for the last time. Yet other lips and ours have said goodbye with hearts unmoved and careless, turned away, and knew not they were parting for all time while flowers were blooming and the birds were gay. There was no bell to toll with mournful chime. They parted and knew not was the last time. And other eyes than ours, my love, shall see the white moon wither in the western sky, and other eyes than ours shall look their last across the waves to see the red sun die, while, like some half-forgotten childhood's rhyme, they speak the words we speak for the last time. The goodly ships lie broken at the haven, Fair tresses float upon the heaving tide, and riderless the steed comes home at even. The unseen shadow follows by our side, follows through winter's chill and summer's prime until we say goodbye for the last time. But we shall meet again. Love cannot die. An infinite soul with soul shall blend in other worlds, be the time far or nigh. Surely this little life is not the end and tears will fall in heavenly spheres sublime, and sighing sorrow weep for the last time. Shaw Nielsen repeats this simplicity, this emotion, with a richer imagination and more skilful workmanship. Remarkable are the melody of his verse, the ease and strength of his rhythms, his mastery of time and cadence, his intuitive sense of words, lines such as and all the sighing bloom that takes the dew have the touch of Shakespeare. The pure depth of his feeling recalls Blake. His verses come like Blake's children, with innocent faces clean. To these gifts are added visions of fancy, sympathy with humanity and the passion of a man. Some of his work, magnificent and pathos perfectly expressed, is unsurpassed in the range of English lyrics. First of Australian poets, he reflects lasting honour on the land that bred him. End of preface. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 1 Heart of Spring by Sean Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone O heart of spring, spirit of light and love and joyous day, 
so soon to faint beneath the fiery summer still smiles the earth eager for thee alway welcome art thou so ever short thy stay thou bold thou blithe newcomer whither o oh, whither this thy journeying o oh, heart of spring o oh, heart of spring after the stormy days of winter's rain when the keen winds their last lament are sighing the sun shall raise thee up to life again in thy dim death thou shalt not suffer pain surely thou dost not fear this quiet dying whither o oh, whither blithely journeying o oh, heart of spring o oh, heart of spring youth's emblem ancient as unchanging light uncomprehended unconsumed still burning oh that we could as thee rise from the night to find a world of blossoms lilac white and long-winged swallows unafraid returning whither o oh, whither this thy journeying o oh, heart of spring end of section one this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 2 Green Singer by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee All singers have shadows that follow like fears, But I know a singer who never saw tears, a gay love, a green love delightsome divine the spring is that singer an old love of mine a players have shadows and into the play old sorrows will saunter old sorrows will stay but here is a player whose speech is divine the spring is that player an old love of mine all singers grow heavy the hours as they run bite up all the blossoms suck up all the sun but i know a singer the lightsome divine the gay love the green love an old love of mine end of section two this librivox recording is in the public domain section three song be delicate by shaw nielsen read for librivox dot org by andrew tobler let your song be delicate the skies declare no war the eyes of lovers wake everywhere let your voice be delicate how faint a thing is love little love crying under the spring let your song be delicate the flowers can hear too well they know the tremble of the hollow year let your voice be delicate the bees are home all their day's love is sunken safe in the comb let your song be delicate Sing no loud hymn, death is abroad. Oh, the black season, the deep, the dim. End of section three. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section four, Petticoat Green by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Louise Polson. I would not ask of a joyful man, for his heart would be too cold, and I would go on a long journey to a country ripe and old. I would like to walk where the mad folk went, and never a soul was mean. Twill all come easily, mournful man, if you paint me a petticoat green. Oh, every feud is a lifelong feud, and every fight is fair. The girls have eyes, and the men have blood, and the swords are sharp and bare. The witches fight with the dairy maids, and the fairies are still seen. Twill all come easily, mournful man, if you paint me a petticoat green. For green indeed is a dear colour, we learn to lisp thereon, till we grow too tall for our first fair love, and the glories are all gone. And when at length we have footed it well, our eyes grow tender then. We sit and talk when we may not walk, we are close to the green again. A petticoat is a tender thing, tender as love or dew. Perhaps it is piece of an angel's garb that has sometime fallen through. For there be gates in the distant sky that the elder seers have seen. And you, 
You have known the mournful man, so paint me a petticoat green. Paint me all that the children laugh in a long white afternoon. Paint me all that the old men know when they croak to the setting moon. Paint me flowers, and the death of flowers, and the tenderlings that grew. Between the time of the north wind and the kindness of the dew. Paint me eyes on a holiday, and the long kiss of a bride. Paint me ashes and dying men, and the shriek when a woman died. Mournful man, there is love in you, but your big tears come between. Grant me a favour, mournful man, and paint me a petticoat green. Paint me joy in a whistling dance and gloom on a heavy hill. Paint me reeds and a water bird and a matchless maiden's will. Paint me men who have laughed at death and hope that is good to see. I know you have known it, mournful man. You can beckon it up to me. Paint me prisons of olden times and the flight of the butterflies. Paint me all that the madmen see when they speak to the sullen skies. Paint me rogues that are loath to die in the sighing of honest men. Paint me youth that is weak and worn and age that is young again. I would not ask of a joyful man, for his heart would be too cold. But the love is deep in you, mournful man, though your speech is white and old. Paint me lilies and summer maids and skeletons, all are clean. It will all come easily, mournful man, if you paint me a petticoat green. End of section 4 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Louise Polsom Section 5 Greetings by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by La Poveca Fill up, fill up, today we meet. What of the wind? Who knows the weather? Shall we be old men in the street? Fill up, fill up, today we meet. We who have found the eager feet that kindly God is lost to tether. Fill up, fill up, today we meet. What of the wind? Who knows the weather? End of section 5. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 6. The Land Where I Was Born by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Have you ever been down to my country, where the trees are green and tall? The days are long and the heavens are high, but the people there are small. There is no work there, it is always play. The sun is sweet in the morn, but a thousand dark things walk at night in the land where I was born. Have you ever been down to my country, where the birds made happy spring, the parrots screamed from the honey trees, and the jays hopped chattering? Strange were the ways of the water birds in the brown swamps night and morn. I knew the roads they had in the reeds, in the land where I was born. Have you ever been down to my country? Have you ridden the horses there? They had silver manes, and we made them prance, and plunge and gallop and rear. We were knights of the olden time, when the old chain mail was worn. The swords would flash, and the helmets crack, in the land where I was born. Have you ever been down to my country? It was full of smiling queens. They had flaxen hair, they were white and fair but they never reached their teens. Their shoes were small and their dreams were tall, wonderful frocks they wore, but the queens all strayed from the place we played, in the land where I was born. I know you have been to my country, though I never saw you there. I know you have loved all things I loved, flowery, sweet and fair. The days were long, it was always play, 
but we we were tired and worn they could not welcome us back again to the land where i was born end of section six this librivox recording is in the public domain section seven the sun is up by shaw nielsen read for librivox dot org by larry wilson speak not of death it is a merry morn a glittering bird has danced into a tree from his abundant heart bravely are born the loves of leafly choristers to me music is of the sunlight strong and free the sun is up and death is far away the first hour is the sweetest of the day blithely a bush boy wanders on a walk shaking with joy joyous in heart and limb for his delight the trees have learned to talk and all the flowers have little laughs with him watching the far sky beautiful and dim the sun is up and death is far away the first hour is the sweetest of the day end of section seven this recording is in the public domain section eight pale neighbor by shaw nielsen read for LibriVox.org by cassandra pale neighbor over the road she lives not far my neighbor pale and thin sweet is the world she cries how sweet to keep on living in her heart it is a right red heart that cannot stoop to pine her hand clasp is a happiness her welcome is a wine love she will have it is a lilt from some lost comedy played long ago when the white stars lightened the greenery ever she talks of earth and air and sunlight junketing gaily she says i know i shall be dancing in the spring almost i fear her low low voice as one may fear the moon as one may fear too faint a sound in an old uncanny tune over the road twill not be long clearly i see it all ere ever the red days come up or the pale grasses fall there will be black upon us and within our eyes a dew we shall be walking neighborly as neighbors two and two end of section eight this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by cassandra Section 9 To a Blue Flower by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone I would be dismal with all the fine pearls of the crown of a king, but I can talk plainly to you, you little blue flower of the spring. Here in the heart of September the world that I walk in is full, of the hot happy sound of the shearing, the rude heavy scent of the wool. Soon would I tire of all riches or honours or power that they fling, but you are my own, of my own folk, you little blue flower of the spring. I was around by the cherries to-day, all the cherries are pale, the world is a woman in velvet, the air is the colour of ale i would be dismal with all the fine pearls of the crown of a king but i can give love talk to you you little blue flower of the spring end of section nine this librivox recording is in the public domain section ten old nell dickerson by shaw nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Cassandra. Old Nell Dickerson. The young folk heard the old folk say, "'Twas long ago she came. Some said it was her own, and some it was another's shame. All pleasantly the seasons passed, in gray and gold and green, but the heart of old Nell Dickerson no one had ever seen. They said that when a baby crowed, she turned her head away, and when delightful lovers kissed, her sallow face went gray. Some say she laughed at love and death and every man-made law, but the heart of old Nell Dickerson no babbler ever saw. October with warm greenery made all the town a dream. The poorest soul had time to laugh, the gravel streets were cream. 
A hundred anthems rose to God through the uproarious blue, but the heart of old Nell Dickerson no singer ever knew. The summer sauntered in with wheat and forest fire and haze, and the white frocks of white girls and lads with love ablaze. Sweet sighs were in the high heavens and upon the warm ground, but the heart of old Nell Dickerson it never yet was found. The winter came with wistful talk of water birds in tune, and while their snowy treasures slept, did mother use commune. In every wind and every rain, some daring joys would climb, but the heart of old Nell Dickerson was prisoner all the time. The streamer stood across the sky, one evening clear and warm. The old folk said the streamers come for telling strife and storm. When old Nell laughed her hollow laugh, the neighbors looked in awe, but the heart of old Nell Dickerson no neighbor ever saw. And with the night came thundering, like evil wandering near, and the tender little children wept, and the women shook with fear. Out on the night went one stern soul, along the wind it blew. Oh, the heart of old Nell Dickerson no babbler ever knew. Softly they sought her little room, and she was blue and cold. Upon the wall some straggling words, her last poor wishes told. Nothing she gave and little begged, they read there mournfully, Bitter and black was all my life, but wear no black for me. T'was a green day and a mad day, and lovers walked along, and the old men, the gray men, the ruddy men and strong, and the tenderest of pale girls in pink and green and blue walked mournfully behind the heart that no one ever knew. And there were many dropping tears on sashes red and wide, and more hot prayers were said that day than if a king had died. And some wore white and yellow frocks, and some wore blue and green, but the heart of old Nell Dickerson no one had ever seen. End of section 10. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cassandra. Section 11. Bush Scene by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Green leaves, a patch of world along a river, The drab and silver draping every limb, The cackling kingfisher with throat a quiver, Eager to sing for us a morning hymn. By yonder trees the rough red rock hangs over, The black ducks brood a little fleet at sea. In the far sky a wicked foe doth hover, A plover calls, it is a call for me. Across the stream, slowly and with much shrinking, Softly a full-eyed wallaby descends To the blue water's edge, I see him drinking, And he and I and all his folk are friends. End of section 11 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 12 Julie Calloway by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee This world I always call it mine Because no other world I know Love it or hate it how you will With kindness like the overflow Of some fair river rambling on So does it only seek to bless Oh, dry your tears, for all things gone, the old world kindly wanders on. This world of mine, this world of yours, November and a glorious day, so drowsily the bees did hum, and pretty Julie Calloway stood laughing, lingering at the door of all this sweetness, bracing gleam. The old time singers sang of yore, so let us all sing evermore. The air grew sweeter, days were long, yet everywhere beneath the sky, Death, who would never be gainsaid, sat waiting with a watchful eye. On every tree there comes a flower, to every lad and lass a time, a dancing day, a month, an hour, the gold world trembles in a shower. Oh, pretty Julie Calloway, God surely loved her for her dream, a little home not far away. How wonderful the world may seem When one we love and love is strong Walks with us in the flowery way 
all else that in the world is wrong. How soon forgotten love is long. It is not far, you see her grave. Tis in the shadow of the trees. I sometimes fancy Julie hears the midday murmuring of the bees and knows our footsteps every way and this sweet world to her denied twas in the bloom of bride's array she died upon her wedding day and is god merciful or kind he knoweth all full well he knew millions of hearts in maddened men and wasting worn-out women too praying for death as devils pray and she pure-hearted beautiful in orange bloom in bride's array death found her on her wedding day end of section twelve this librivox recording is in the public domain section thirteen lowen's nest by shaw nielsen read for librivox dot org by bruce Kachuk. Here in the rubble and the sand, this monument by thee was planned. Great was the love that in thee hid, O builder of the pyramid. By no delirious king compelled, but by the mother heart upheld. Little of pain or toil thou wrecked, brave builder, eager architect. This and no other was thy shrine this monument to birth was thine great was the love within thee hid o builder of the pyramid end of section thirteen this librivox recording is in the public domain section fourteen old granny sullivan by Shaw Nielsen, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. A pleasant shady place it is, a pleasant place and cool. The township folk go up and down, the children pass to school. Along the river lies my world, a dear sweet world to me. I sit and learn, I cannot go, there is so much to see. But Granny has seen all the world, and often by her side. I sit and listen while she speaks of youthful days of pride. Old Granny's hands are clasped. She wears her favourite faded shawl. I ask her this, I ask her that. She says I mind them all. The boys and girls that Granny knew, far o'er the seas are they. But there's no love like the old love, and the old world far away. Her talk is all of wakes and fares, or how when night would fall, twas many a queer thing crept and came, and Granny minds them all. A strange new land was this to her, and perilous, rude, and wild, where loneliness and tears and care came to each mother's child. The wilderness closed all around, grim as a prison wall. But white folk then were stout of heart. Ah, Granny minds it all. The day she first met Sullivan, she tells it all to me, how she was hardly twenty-one, and he was twenty-three. The courting days, the kissing days, but bitter things befall. The bravest hearts that plan and dream, old granny minds it all her wedding dress i know by heart yes every flounce and frill and the little home they lived in first with the garden on the hill twas there her baby boy was born and neighbours came to call but none had seen a boy like jim and granny minds it all they had their fight in those old days but sullivan was strong a smart quick man at anything twas hard to put him wrong one day they brought him from the mine the big salt tears will fall twas long ago god rest his soul poor granny minds it all the first dark days of widowhood the weary days and slow the grim disheartening uphill fight then granny lived to know 
the children ah they grew and grew sound rosy cheeked and tall the children still are there to her old granny minds them all how well she loved her little brood oh granny's heart was brave she gave to them her love and faith all that the good god gave they change not with the changing years as babies just the same she feels for them though some alas have brought her grief and shame the big world called them here and there and many a mile away they cannot come she cannot go the darkness haunts the day and i no flesh and blood of hers sit here while shadows fall i sit and listen granny talks for granny minds it all tis time to pause for pause we must we only have our day yes by and by our dance will die our fiddlers cease to play and we shall seek some quiet place where great grey shadows fall and sit and wait as granny waits we'll sit and mind them all end of section fourteen this librivox recording is in the public domain section fifteen may by shaw nielsen read for librivox dot org by louise polson shyly the silver hatted mushrooms make soft entrance through and undelivered lovers half awake hear noises in the dew yellow in all the earth and in the skies the world would seem faint as a widow mourning with soft eyes and falling into dream up the long hill i see the slow plough leave furrows of brown dim is the day and beautiful i grieve to see the sun go down but there are suns a many for mine eyes day after day delightsome in grave greenery they rise red oranges in may end of section 15 this librivox recording is in the public domain Section 16 Maggie Tulliver by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone I see the old-time mill, the old-time miller, The peaceful river in a pleasant land, And you, the dark-eyed, dear, rebellious Maggie, They could not understand. Love in the bud, hedgerows and English meadows, the sunlight's flickering shadows gathering fast and your big tears because the world had gripped you the golden gates are past dreamer of many dreams from the beginning eager to love eager to spoil and spend into your life god put a crooked lover and pity love's old friend anon i see a tall man proudly fashioned a full sweet woman lovable and fair what of the path sweet flowers and sharp-edged perils and bleeding hearts are there the world has branded you a false foul sinner it is not merciful and you were rash up at the whipping post your white flesh trembled you felt the cruel lash in the last anguish does the unseen pity see the long wrestlings of this flesh and blood but death was kind to you dear dark-eyed maggie who walked into the flood end of section sixteen this librivox recording is in the public domain section seventeen Break of Day by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Lapoveca Break of Day The stars are pale, old is the night, his case is grievous, his strength doth fail. Through still hours 
the dews have draped with love's old lavishness the drowsy flowers. And night shall die. Already low the morn's first excesses across the sky. An evil time is done. Again, as someone lost in a quaint parable, comes up the sun. End of section number 17. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 18. Little Dead Milliner by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. So she is gone from us, she whom we knew, of the face beautiful and the eyes blue, when the earth only gives heartache and toil, the purest will perish, the sweetest will spoil. Tell me, O God, is there no spirit still in her, who has been false to this little dead milliner? Blue eyes once showed to her all the world fair. Red sunlight made for her joy everywhere. Hearts that are holiest, bright eyes and blind, these make the tragedies of humankind. Is there no answer, no sweet spirit still in her, who has been false to this little dead milliner? Had she been dull and cold as she was warm? Had she but loved the calm, hated the storm? Had all creation been otherwise planned? Had not God planted her with his own hand? Pain had not pressed her so. Is there not still in her something that speaks for this little dead milliner? She in her fever felt many fires burn. Back to the bitter road, how could she turn? Stars white, mysterious, lighted the sky. Dying, she gazed at them. Did she know why? Is there no answer, no sweet spirit still in her who has been false to this little dead milliner? Though in the years to come we may forget, morning eyes still shall make all the earth wet. Young hearts shall know the grim death that she died. Fairest flowers are the flowers plucked in their pride. Tell me, O oh God, is there no spirit still in her who has been false to this little dead milliner? End of section 18. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 19. The Day is Thine. By Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. T'was in that far-off land of mine, dear land I never more may see. The great church, like a ghost, stood up. The old sundial spoke to me, spoke deep into this soul of mine. Only the day the day is thine the bright-eyed baby buds and flowers showered sweetness on the dancing spring down in the dark green shade i heard the singers of the deep woods sing the old sundial said its say this only this no other day the players of the playtime pass how swift the troublous seasons turn all that we strive for most we love and loving never yet may learn the old sundial still speaks on this day already tis far gone the kisses and the fallen tears the hearts that could not hold their pain seem holier in the mist of years the old sundial speaks again stern teacher to this soul of mine this day quick perishing is thine end of section nineteen this librivox recording is in the public domain section number twenty sheedy was dying by shaw nielsen read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen gray as a rising ghost helpless and dumb this he had feared the most now it had come 
through the tent door mocking defying the thirsty land lay and sheedy was dying why should he ever keep turning keep turning all his thoughts over to quicken their burning why should the north wind speak creeping and crying who else could mourn for him sheedy was dying a he had travelled far homeless a rover drunk his good share and more half the world over so now had ended all toiling and trying out in his tent alone sheedy was dying never a priest to say where he is going ah he shall take the road as he is knowing so to his rest and the north wind is crying who else should mourn for him sheedy was dying kind in a surly way somewhat rough spoken truth to its fellow men keeping unbroken with a strong man's contempt for the world and its lying now on his bunk alone sheedy was dying birds of the thirsty land in the dull gray mist of the even time floating away still did the north wind speak creeping and crying white with his mouth agape sheedy was dying End of section 20. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section number 21. The Eyes of Little Charlotte by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Katrina Dixon. Now God has made a wistful world and a woman strangely coy. Her eyes say, come, and go, and come, and stay, and be a boy. Oh, the eyes of little Charlotte say, come, kiss me if you can. But in a trice they change and cry, go out and be a man. Oh, the eyes of little Charlotte say, you shall not flinch at pain. You shall not sigh for the cool cities or moan for the soft rain the wind shall bite you throat and cheek the sun shall leave its tan but the eyes of little charlotte say go out and be a man and you shall speak as a man speaks not mealy-mouthed or mild but you must go with a girl's love for every lisping child nor shall you live in the far clouds as only dreamers can for the eyes of little Charlotte say, Go out and be a man, and you shall fight as a man fights, and fare as a man may, and you shall see as giants see, and hear what giants say. You shall not bide in a safe place, near by a lady's fan, for the eyes of little Charlotte say, Go out and be a man, and your reward the old reward that is for all who dare the long love of a warm woman and kisses proud and fair oh you shall toil for love the law since ever love began for the eyes of little charlotte say go out and be a man end of section 21 this is a librivox recording in the public domain Recording by Katrina Dixon Section 22 The Meeting of Sighs by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Rebecca Eden Walker Your voice was the rugged old voice that I knew. I gave the best grip of my greeting to you. I knew not your lips, you knew not mine. Of travel and travail we gave not a sign. We drank and we chorused with quips in our eyes, but under our song was the meeting of sighs. 
I knew not your lips, you knew not mine, for lean years and lone years had watered the wine. End of section 22. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Rebecca Eden Walker. Section 23 Old Violin by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Speak not to me, old violin. Mock not this heart of mine. Thou mummy with the glistening skin, speak not to me, old violin. For the dead men have shadows thin, and all their sobs are thine. Speak not to me, old violin. Mock not this heart of mine. End of section 23. This recording is in the public domain. Section 24. Love's Coming by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Gantz. Quietly as rosebuds talk to the thin air, Love came so lightly I knew not he was there. Quietly as lovers creep at the middle moon, Softly as players tremble in the tears of a tune. Quietly as lilies their faint vows declare, Came the shy pilgrim, I knew not he was there. Quietly as tears fall on a wild sin, Softly as griefs call in a violin. Without hail or tempest, blue sword or flame, Love came so lightly, I knew not that he came. End of section 24. This recording is in the public domain. Section 25. The Lover Sings. By Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. It is not dark, it is not day, the earth lies quivering to the dew. Shall we not love her? All men may. Lo, here a lover passes too. Down a green shadowy path he goes, And in his hand he bears a rose, Still singing that his heart is true. Creeps the low darkness, Where the eve groweth more gloomy, And anon the lover sings, And doth he grieve for red lip kisses, Three days gone, hark how he sings, High heavenly clear, chief messenger of light To cheer the brown earth, and that bides thereon. Listen, and we shall leave the earth, Brooding no more or baser things. My lily love hath rosy worth, Like to a happy flower she clings, Glories have come up in his eyes. Wrapped in a fire, he leaps, he flies. Not for himself the lover sings. In every loveless lane or way, Hearts have been heavy, prison cold. For all who only moan and pray, Still doth he sing. He sang of old, joy-bearer, Barred of better things. Not for himself the lover sings. Singer of summer, uncontrolled. Mourners move onward from the gloom. Not for himself the lover sings. Give us, they cry, the buds, the bloom, The long light on our journeyings. Star follows star in the dull gray. Deep is the dark, it drinks the day. For very love of God, he sings. End of section 25. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 26. The Girl with the Black Hair by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Gantz. 
Her lips were a red peril to set men quivering, and in her feet there lived the ache and the green lilt of spring. Twas on a night of red blossoms, oh, she was a wild wine. The colors of all the hours lie in this heart of mine. I was impelled by the white moon and the deep eyes of the spring, and the voices of the purple flutes waltzing and wavering. Of all the bloom most delicate sipping the gold air was the round girl with the round arms, the girl with the black hair. Her breath was the breath of roses, white roses, clean and clear. Her eyes were blue as the high heaven, where God is always near. Her lips were a red peril to set men quivering. And in her feet there lived the ache and the green lilt of spring. End of section 26. This recording is in the public domain. Section 27. Twas in the Early Summertime by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Perchance it was of Chaucer's day. Old Chaucer, cheerier soul than he, ne'er drank the good red wine of life, and all his rhymes rang joyfully. Or did it spring from some sad heart, a dreamer wandering in the blue, who in the slumbering sunlight sang of sweetness that he never knew, poor old faint half forgotten rhyme, twas in the early summer time. I dreamed a dream of gardens clothed in many a bloom of pink and snow, of meadows where a river ran, and woodland noises sweet and low, the bold hills and the great calm sky the songbirds warbling far away, the green wheat in the ear and all, the glory of a golden day. Poor old quaint half-forgotten rhyme, t'was in the early summer time. I dreamed of kisses and of tears, a sweet warm world and wondrous fair, of lovers lingering in the gloom, and holy men at evening prayer of singers and their brave old songs, of flowers and many a field of hay, of strong men riding out to war, and children dancing at their play. Poor old quaint half-forgotten rhyme, t'was in the early summer time. Five hundred years ago and more, five hundred years and I to-day, am sauntering in the bloom, and lo, a sigh, a kiss, they haste away. My heart beats happier for your loves, my heart is merrier for your joy. God's blessings come in sun and bloom to every lovesick girl and boy. Poor old quaint unforgotten rhyme, t'was in the early summer time. End of section 27. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 28. As Far As My Heart Can Go by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org. I care not now for the gardens or the gayest flowers that grow. The little flower in the firelight is as far as my heart can go. I care not now for the long road or the mountains far away. The little world that we love in is as far as my feet can stray. No smile for me from the city, no salty call for me. The mouth of my little sweetheart is as far as my eyes can see. I sing no more of the red wars, I have no love for steel. The glamour of my darling is as far as my lips can feel. What can I know of heaven? What should a lover know? The little face at the fireside is as far as my heart can go. End of section 28. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Peterson. Section 29. 
Her Eyes by Shawn Nielsen, read for LibriVox.org. Dark eyes are hers, but in their darkness lies all the white holiness of paradise. A tender violet within them shows, and the unsullied beauty of the rose. Dark eyes are hers. Dark eyes are hers that move my heart to sing. They have consumed the summer, caught the spring, stolen the starlight, and exultingly lifted the moonbeam's old embroidery. Dark eyes are hers. End of section 29. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Peterson. Section 30. The Heart Longs by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org. The warm wind wandering at its will, the long grass withering day by day, bring back life's sunrise promises, full voiced and rosy winged were they. I feel your eyes warm witchery, sweetheart, my longing is for thee. It seems so clear the day we met, the big sun sauntering up the sky, the feathery clouds afloat afar, on such a day, oh, who could die or think of death? You smiled on me. Sweetheart, my longing was for thee. At every turning of the year, a madness moves into the hours. The roses in the rainy time, the frail sweet family of flowers. How tenderly they speak to me. Sweetheart, my longing is for thee. Did ever love so burn as ours, mid all tempestuous loves of yore? The light that dances from the sky shows for a moment and no more. Down in this world of mystery, sweetheart, my longing is for thee. End of section 30. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by John Peterson. Section 31. The Hour is Lost by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Gauntz. The hour is lost. Was ever hour so sweet? Fruitful of blessing, friends, and honeyed words. The sunlight in our faces, at our feet. The world bright, beautiful, its flocks and herds. Foliage of forests, choruses of birds. Oh, happy time, why did we stand downcast? We should have leapt for love, but now the hour is past. The hour is lost. Scarce had we time to mark the glory of the green, the sky's soft blue. It came as silently as comes the dark. Our hearts burned hot within us ere we knew. Then suddenly we said, can it be true? The golden time was ours, and now downcast we stand dumb and amazed. Alas, the hour is past. End of section 31. This recording is in the public domain. Section 32. Surely God Was a Lover by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Surely God was a lover when he bade the day begin Soft as a woman's eyelid, white as a woman's skin. Surely God was a lover with a lover's faults and fears When he made the sea as bitter as a willful woman's tears. Surely God was a lover with the madness love will bring. He wrought while his love was singing and put her soul in the spring. Surely God was a lover by a woman's wile controlled, when he made the summer a woman thirsty and unconsoled. Surely God was a lover when he made the trees so fair, and every leaf is a glory caught from a woman's hair. Surely God was a lover. See in the flowers he grows, his love's eyes in the violet, her sweetness in the rose. End of section 32
This recording is in the public domain. Section 33 You and Yellow Air by Shaw Nielsen, read for LibriVox.org by Louise Paulson. You and Yellow Air I dream of an old kissing time and the flowered follies there, in the dim place of cherry trees, of you and yellow air. It was an age of babbling when the players would play, mad with the wine and miracles of a charmed holiday. Bewildered was the warm earth with whistling and sighs, and a young foal spoke all his heart with diamonds for eyes. You were of love's own colour in eyes and heart and hair, in the dim place of cherry trees, ridden by yellow air. It was the time when red lovers with the red fevers burn, a time of bells and silver seeds and cherries on the turn. Children looked into tall trees, and old eyes looked behind. God, in his glad October, no sullen man could find. Out of your eyes a magic fell lazily as dew, and every lad with lad's eyes made summer love to you. It was a rain of roses, of blue flowers for the eye, and the rustling of green girls under a white sky. I dream of an old kissing time, and the flowered follies there, in the dim place of cherry trees, of you and yellow air. End of section 33. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 34. Dear Little Cottage by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Rebecca Eden Walker. Tis not for the lilies, white lilies and tall, the grass has outlived them. It grows by the wall of the dear little cottage that I know. Tis not for the cherries, cherries are wild, and into their branches has clamored no child to drink up the blood of a cherry. Tis not for the river, hemmed in by the weir, or the lilt of the winds in the glow of the year when the birds o'er the water make merry. Mm, a spell is upon me, and why should I stray when I have fine company all the long day in the dear little cottage that I know? It is for the voices, the voices that bless, the lips that made music, the hands that caressed in the dear little cottage that I know. It is for the shadows that sit by the door, the feet that go tripping the old broken floor at night when the fiddles are shrieking. It is for the counsel, long loving and wise, the hopes that were born in a legion of sighs. The lips, oh, the cold lips, are speaking. It is for a temple enshrouded in mist, a rosy girl raising her face to be kissed in the dear little cottage that I know. End of section 34. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Rebecca Eden Walker. Section 35. Roses Three by Sean Nielsen What is a rose, a white, white rose, A sweetheart sweetening in the spring? Shyly she lives, and shyly grows, Mourner and mystic, blossoming. What is a rose, a red, red rose, A woman proud in a proud hour? Scented of love she overflows, it is the ripening of the flower. What is a rose, a yellow rose, A woman grave in the pale gold? Braver than all, she smiles and knows, It is the quietening for the cold. End of section 35. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cadwallader. Section 36, The Sacrifice, by Shaw Nielsen, read for LibriVox.org, 
by Larry Wilson. White for the grave, strange-eyed and sable-dressed, is this my love so quietly doth lie? The sunlight of her sweetness, her dear grace, all that she gave, falls to the earth to die. Love's utter sacrifice, life's old long pain, lost, lost, and shall this ever live again, O God of pity? White for the grave, all grace, all glory gone. My love was young, my love was sweet and warm, and so we dreamed as quiet voyagers. Most hateful wreck, too cruel strife and storm. The grave will cry its hunger every hour, yet thus to spoil the glory of a flower, O oh God of pity. Yet in her rest she shall not see gray hairs, or children trampling on the holy things. Though every day be dark, still in the dark, love looks for light, the old hope climbs and clings, up through all tears. In the black gloom and pain, my torn heart cries, Give me my love again, O God of pity. End of section 36 This recording is in the public domain. Section 37 Little White Girl by Shaw Nielsen Let for LibriVox.org by La Poveca. Little White Girl Fears are mine for a face so pretty. Violet perish, lilies are few, there is an ache in my heart for you. In all the tawdry, treacherous city, you are the one thing white and clean, the only riches where all is mean. Little white girl, so pale and pretty. Fears are mine for a face so pretty, I have been lover of lips and chins, and a listener to violins, crying for love and calling for pity, and it all comes back with your eyes and hair, but the darkness threatens you everywhere, little white girl, so pale and pretty. And of section 37. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 38 In the Street by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Gauntz. The night, the rain, who could forget the gray streets glimmering in the wet? Wreckers and ruined wreckage met. There was no dearth of all the unlovely things that yet must plague the earth. Gloom in the streets' unhallowed joys. The sly-eyed girls, the jeering boys, Faint caroling amid the noise, a woman worn, A broken life, a heart, a voice, trembling and torn. She did not sing of hillsides steep, Of reapers stooping low to reap. No lovelorn shepherd with his sheep Made moan or call. A mother kissed her child asleep, and that was all. Slowly into our hearts there crept, I know not what. It flamed, it leapt. Was it God's love that in us slept? I saw the mark of tears upon her as she stepped into the dark. End of section 38. This recording is in the public domain. Section 39 Child of Tears by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Impetuous as a wild winged bird, your mother could not be a slave. Her gift she gave unto the world, a child of many tears she gave. No mouth was mad your mother to kiss, no bosom held you safe and warm. Poor little soul who came and cried, and no one heard you in the storm. The people of the marketplace of all your shame made merry play. The worshippers to chapel went, 
and said our hearts are clean today each mother to her white breast held her little might of love's own gold softly she sang for its sweet rest and you were sleeping hard and cold they said of you his eyes are bright fair was his mother's face to see his mother's heart was false and black so as his mother he shall be why the dark shadows hovering frowned you knew not with your wondering eyes you played about the brink of hell and you were sweet for paradise in the long row or your little grave can cover all your baby fears the great world cursed you and you died dear little unloved child of tears End of section 39. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 42. The Petticoat Place by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Smiling Jade. The Petticoat Place. Teach me not, tell me not. Love ever sinned. See how her petticoat sweetens the wind. Back to the earth she went, broken at noon. Here is her petticoat flapping a tune. Have ye not ever heard petticoat sing? I hear a morning flute and a sweet string. Little silk ally in, this her last war. Know ye the meaning of what she died for? Mourner most delicate, surely you hold manner that she had stored safe from the cold she had the loving blood love gave her eyes and the world showered on her icicle lies speak to her little wind lovable sky say to the soul of her bravo goodbye teach me not tell me not loved ever sinned see how her petticoat sweetens the wind End of section 42. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 41. The Loving Tree by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Three women walked upon a road, and the first said airily, Of all the trees in all the world, which is the loving tree? The second said, My eyes have seen no tree that is not fair, but the orange tree is the sweetest tree, the loving blood is there. And the third said, In the green time I knew a loving tree that gave a drink of the blood-red milk. It was the mulberry. Then the first one said, Of all the trees no sweetest can I name. Ask her who yonder slowly comes that woman lean and lame grief like a hideous suckling hung along her hollow breast pain was upon her as she walked and as she stooped to rest why will you question so she said is it to mock at me for how should i who walk in hell know of a loving tree my eyes are not as a woman's eyes they hope not east or west Dull famine my bedmate is, and loneliness my guest. Tis not the most delicious flower that leaves the scent of spring, nor is it yet the brightest bird that loads his heart to sing. A tree may dance in the white weather, or dream in a blue gown. A tree may sing as a sweetheart to bid the stars come down. Some trees are slim and lovable, and some are sleek and strong. But the tree that has the cripple's heart will know the cripple's song. The sweetest death is the red death that comes up nakedly. And the tree that has the foiled heart, it is the loving tree. While ever lip shall seek for lip, while ever light shall fall, the tree that has the ruined heart is tenderest of all. Oh, ye may have your men to kiss and children warm to hold, but the heart that had the hottest love was never yet consoled. The women three walked on their way. Their shamed eyes could see how well the tree with the foiled heart is still the loving tree. 
End of section 41. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 42. Inland Born by Sean Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Smiling Jade. Inland Born. The tall men wooed her in the south. They loved along the sea. The tall man caught her to the north, and she went tearfully. He talked of all the full seasons. The white wheat was his goal. But the long fight in the wilderness, to her he never told. She saw the cool brown winters pass, the heart sick spring come on and the summer as a great tyrant, till half her hope was gone. Her lips, they were the woman's lips, eager to bless and blame. The lean years quailed her, and in them her snow-white children came. At night she sang them to their sleep with cool songs of the sea, and in the day her big soft eyes went south eternally. She sang of boats and merriment, and ships that come and go, of orchards and the rosemary, and all the flowers that grow. She sang of all the miracles that in the south are seen, of all the gracious waterfalls and all the world of green. She told them of the blue waters, of all her soul had planned, of the crying birds and the seaweed and the music on the sand. She said, These whom I love shall go where the wind is sweet and free. My little inland children shall wander by the sea. The elder was a five years girl with the blue eyes of the mother. And younger by a year, there ran a flaxen-headed brother. The north wind in his war came out, and sees not night and day, and the little inland children had lost the heart to play. These two fell ill with a quick fever, it was in the red, ripe weather. Kind neighbors came with flowers for them when they lay dead together. Oh, that we love goes lightly out. The clouds play in the sky, and half the wind said openly, Here is a day to die. Slowly she saw them, and her eyes went south eternally. She said, God stole my children, they never saw the sea. An old man said, Your children now shall walk the streets of gold. But she said, it is a dim heaven, and merciless and cold. Then spoke to her an old mother of love that is divine. But she said, The God of love he is, a foe to me and mine. Then spoke to her a sweet neighbor of good days yet to be. But she said, God stole my children, they never saw the sea. The tall man spoke in lover talk to blend her for the day, but the sunlight was more merciful. It had no word to say. End of section 42. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 43. The Child We Lost by Shaw Nielsen, read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee. Six weeks it was till Christmas time, and summer seemed not far away. The white sheep ran upon the hills, the white lambs bleated all the day. Oh, never was the earth more fair. There was a sweetness in the air that sang of heaven everywhere. The garden was a world of bloom, the cherry trees were red and green, a league away the white smoke rose, and always did there come between the glory that we feel and know when sunlight seems to overflow into a green warm world below. 
our brown-eyed beauty claimed a kiss. Sweet were her words and full of play. Light as the dancing thistledown was all her airy talk that day of flowers and skies and heavenly things, and sometimes softest whisperings, like music trembling on the strings. Life to the child was very fair, up from the ranges far and blue, the sun came rosily each morn to shine upon the world she knew. It was the time when bush birds sing, and children's thoughts go wandering, when summer time makes love to spring. The season sixteen times had turned, gladsome or bitter, dark or fair, since to our lives there came a love, a joy that lightened every care. We watched her wandering down the hill. We watched her lovingly until she seemed like someone standing still. The angel spoke not that bright day. Alas, that they should love the gloom. Had they but whispered, had she turned back to the well-loved garden bloom. O oh, gentle heart so soft and kind. O oh, big brown eyes so bright and blind. What was it that you sought to find? Back in the dim gray time they tell of children tempted far away in the white glimmering of the moon, in twilight or at dawn of day. One evening when the sun was down, a woman came, her eyes were brown, but our child came not from the town. End of section 43. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 44. Under a Courajong by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Here is the ecstasy of sun-fed wine and song. Drink, it is melody under a Courajong. What sweeter space on earth for glistening youth and maid to find the quiet mirth under the quiet shade? What sweeter place than this for loving eyes to see? For lovers' lips to kiss under the lover's tree. It is the time to blow hot kisses on the spring, When dreams begin to go under the blossomy. Let not the mouth be cold, love is not over long. Only today is gold under a courajong. End of section 44. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Luckless Bard to the Flying Blossom by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson You and I and our kind had glees together. Now in our turn shall we find foul friends and weather. You had the love of the sky, all the world's honey. You are a pauper, and I have no money. Back in the days that we knew, O oh, idle fellow, you had the heart for the blue, the mouth for the yellow. You who have scented the sky, sat around honey. You are a pauper, and I have no money. In the dim place where we go, no sweet rebelling burns, for the eyes never glow down in our dwelling. I had the taste of the wine, you of the honey. Little white kinsman of mine, I have no money. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Section 46 From a Coffin by Shaw Nielsen Wrapped in the yellow earth, what should I fear? Sour hate and shallow mirth never come near. Shape me no epitaph, sugar no rhyme. I had the heart to laugh once upon a time. End of section 46. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Cadwallader. Section 47. All the World's a Lolly Shop by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee. Life is behind the counter and... He waits on all who buy. He has a sweet for every mouth, 
a smile for every sigh and tis the greatest miracle that ever did befall he has so many customers and yet he serves them all now some do fear too much the powers that would all joy retard and some bite slow and gingerly at others quick and hard and some look ever left and right and some have little care for all the world's a lolly shop and always trading fair life is behind the counter and he knows not how to frown his talk is of a lad's delight and of a wench's gown he puts the hot love on the lip the red blush on the skin and ever to his spacious shop the customers come in but when the sweetness leaves the sweet and sugars bring no joy may we have love of tenderling some gracious girl or boy and when we have not heart to love we are not wanted then so let us die as ladies calm and courteous gentlemen when we shall face the weather bleak outside the trembling wall can we be sure of taste of bliss or any shop at all so let us not despise the place where we had feastings rare for all the world's a lolly shop and always trading fair and of section forty seven this librivox recording is in the public domain section forty eight it is the last by joe nielsen read for librivox dot org by elminis fee white is the world the weather warm and sweet but time is dear to thee and me my friend for we may meet just once a year soon shall thou rest a warrior home from war it seems not strange gently time make thee more ready for the old sharp change thou hast done well indeed to come thus far cheery and bright bold as a tranquil summer evening star smiling good night thou hast beheld the sunlight sung the song bold with the fears in the grim days thou hast been all along the track of tears thou art not teased of love afraid of fate or storms within too weary art thou now for hope or hate small strife or sin still is thy talk of olden time and friend that thou hast known that all thy stories run to one sad end i am alone how goes the time O oh, friend of mine, I think thy voice doth fail. Here is my best tobacco. Let us drink this good brown ale. Smoking, I watch thy fading features through the smoky way. O oh, ancient friend, I shall I clap pen with you next Christmas Day. End of section 48. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 49. The White Flowers Came by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Twas in the sweet month, tremulous, with dancing joys that none may quell, the white flowers came upon the world. They taught the old time parable. Life looked so very sweet a thing. The watcher wept, the lights burned low. He moved, he felt the long, cold kiss, and yet it seemed not good to go. Two damsels underneath the stars lay listening on the cool green ground. Faint as the falling dew they heard, the song that spins the world around. Strange bickering rose where death and life sat quarreling on the green hillside soft as a blessing spoke the bells blue sky and blossoms for a bride toiling and tired at close of day a thin white widow woman prayed in many a lighted town was told the mystery of man and maid twas in the gray of even time cool earth and sky delightsome mild god's pity came in tears he saw 
the blue eyes of a little child. End of section 49. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 50. The Wedding in September by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by M. Lee. They talked as neighbors solemnly of lambs and wheat and wool. The stripling said, "'Twill not be dark. Tonight the moon is full. Into the wedding feast there came the many psalms of spring. The fiddler by the seamstress sat and said not anything. The bridegroom was the happiest man that ever stepped the town. But the little seamstress she had cried and made the wedding gown. Oh, ask me not why she has cried. They ask a simpler thing. Why do the little birds go out to meet the kiss of spring? In with the dark the dancing came in a little yellow room, and by the flowers the old folks said the young ones love the bloom. The fiddler was a witless man by night or noon or day. But the world had need of moistening, and he had tears to play. He played the darkness into death, and stood where joy had been. The bridegroom could not see the bride, or know what love could mean. He played of maids and merriment, and the young blood of the rover. Of sacraments he played and tolls, and the baby joy of clover. The fiddler was a handless man that could not sow or weep. He did not know the care of kine or the many ways of sheep. Of water birds he played in boats and the white legs in a stream. Of hot love in the marketplace and the spinning of a dream. He played for timorous worshippers who have no God to call. He played to make the flowers grow, to make the manna fall. He played of falls and holiness and the whistling of a rover. Of sacraments he played and tolls, and the baby joy of clover. The fiddler played on lies or hate. He would not waste a tune. A bridesmaid pale with jealousy was patient as the moon. The seamstress had the unsoiled heart that suffers heat and chill, and God had plagued her in the eyes with pity hot to spill. He played of all that men call death, to dear a thing to end and life the unfilled reveler that has a coin to spend. He played of deeps and loneliness, and the whistling of a rover. Of merry men he played in maids, and the summertime in clover. End of section 50. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 51. The Hour of the Parting by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Shall we assault the pain? It is the time to part. Let us of love again eat the impatient heart. There is a gulf behind, dull voice and fallen lip, the blue smoke of the mind the gray light on the ship parting is of the cold that stills the loving breath dimly we taste the old the pitiless meal of death end of section 51 this librivox recording is in the public domain Section 52 O Lady of the Dazzling Flowers by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. O Lady of the Dazzling Flowers and the Frock so white and fine, how hopeless is thy prettiness and that cool heart of thine! Thou hast not been to the rude field where men and women war, thou hast not found what a woman's mouth and a man's full heart are for. Thy speech is all of a thin calm, of sleep and slow sunshine. O oh, hopeless is thy happiness, and that pale heart of thine. 
through the love feud and the love thirst thou hast not fought and smiled thou hast not heard the strings that speak in the crying of a child thou hast not been where tears lie hot and words can only run thou hast not cried to the bare night nor prayed for the white sun in the section fifty two this recording is in the public domain section fifty three the song and the bird by shaw nielsen read for librivox dot org by larry wilson he hath his heaven got for love he shakes the tree happy he heedeth not the many gods that be he telleth all his mad manoeuvring to the morn the shy slow-footed lad hears him and is forlorn and doth he grieve or think in dreaming drab and dim can aught of dull air sink into the heart of him he fears not wind or sky he counts not moon or year or the many men who die or the green wheat in the ear he knoweth the faults and fair and the deeps of deep things how shall i know this bird who sings and sings and sings End of section fifty three. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section fifty four. The Scent of the Lover by Sean Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Tiffany Cadenhead. I saw the mushrooms hoping in the cool June. It is the scent of the lover sweetens the tune may the good men mock me that i dare to say i have seen buds at kissing on a holy day tis no insulted music the moons bestow tis the untaught eternal so long so low time is the old man crying lives on a string in the eyes of a child fallen we hear the spring I am assailed by colors by night, by day. In a mad boat, they would take me red miles away. Love is the loud season. Tears fall too soon. It is the scent of the lover sweetens the moon. End of section 54. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 55 At the End of Spring by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Louise Polson At the End of Spring Put down thy bonny head, this is the end. Thou wert a joyous love, thou wert a pleasing friend. Soft silken is the grass, where thy twinkling colours blend. Bend low thy bonny head, this last sweet morn, An eager amber child, smothered in flowers and corn, Waits for thy death to wear the glories thou hast worn. Bend low thy sunny head, upon the wing, The tender-tinted hours make merry journeying. The tyrant sun who slays, he waits for every spring. Bend low thy weary head, kiss all goodbye. Thy life it was a time of love for lip and eye. The grief is at our hearts that our beloved should die. End of section 55. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 56. For a Child by Shaw Nielsen Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Into your angel mouth the sport of spring And the summer's honey came rioting. Your eyes were as flowers, fine gold in your hair. Warm in my heart you sang, love like a prayer. The sunbeam, the moon mist were one with you, And all the sighing bloom that takes the dew. Love was about you through your silken skin, Love like a sun ray ran out and in. Wild kiss and heavy love lose every hold. O oh, sunlight, my sunlight, how dark the cold. 
End of section 56. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 57. The Dream is Deep by Shaw Nielsen. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Sing me the song that never dies, of little love, blinded and bold, blossoms unblemished and blue skies, and the green going into gold. All the uproarious pipes we played, frenzy and folly, fire and joy, carols we caught up for a maid, and ballads boisterous for a boy. I hear the blended bells and bands, the fiddlers fiddling on the green, the clapping of a thousand hands, the trembling of the tambourine. O oh, happy hours, run kindly slow. Black lies the night, nauseous and grim, who knoweth what a man may know. Not all he hath shall die with him. The man God made he dreameth deep down in his heart. High in the air his heaven lies. How shall he sleep? He had a dream. The dream was fair. End of section 57. This recording is in the public domain. End of Heart of Spring by Shaw Nielsen.